what I want to talk about on our legal update is uh, subject to transactions, and in particular, uh, the documents needed for a subject to transaction. Um, you know, a subject to transaction is one where you purchase the property, but there's a, an existing loan against the property, and you buy it subject to that loan. So that loan remains. Uh, and because that loan remains, there are certain things that have to be done um, to protect both the buyer and the seller in that transaction, uh, as well as certain disclosures and things like that that have to be made. So um, the first document, and you need this in every real estate transaction, but in particular, you want some terms in a subject to transaction uh, that you you wouldn't find in a regular one, which is a purchase contract. So you need a purchase contract, but that purchase contract should identify the existing loans that are going to remain, any reinstatement amounts that need to be paid, uh, you know, to bring those loans current. Because a lot of times on subject to, that's why a homeowner selling the property subject to is because they can't afford to make the payments on on the loan, um, and uh, so the reinstatement amounts. Uh, any other amounts that need to be paid as far as uh, other creditors, uh, HOA is another one where um, a lot of times the HOA uh, is in arrears. And so you, you know, might not be a lien yet um, or, or a judgment yet, uh, but you may want to, uh, may need to pay that. So you want to document all of that as part of your purchase price. The second thing that you're going to want is a subject to addendum. So this is uh, an addendum that accompanies the purchase contract. It should be signed at the time of the purchase contract. And this addendum is going to have uh, tons of disclosures in it for both the buyer and the seller. Um, so uh, it's going to explain, hey, look, this is the nature of the transaction. This is subject to the existing loan or loans are going to remain. And here are the, the risks. Um, you know, one of the major risks is the due on sale clause. Uh, and, you know, that the the minute that property transfers, ninety five percent of all loan documents are going to have a provision in there that says, "Okay, look, this property, you know, if you if you transfer it, just know that we now have a new contractual right that we didn't have before, and that contractual right is at our discretion. We can call the loan due, um, and we have the right to, you know, ex or uh, in, enforce the due on sale clause and basically say, "Hey, look." Everything's due now because you transferred the property. Now there's processes and procedures in place as far as what it looks like to invoke the due on sale clause and to accelerate the debt to, you know, maybe even foreclose. But nevertheless, it does give the lender the ability to do that should they choose. Um, they don't have to. It's not an automatic, hey, uh, the loan is due on sale. It requires the lender actively saying, okay, we are going to enforce the due on sale clause. But we want to disclose that to both the buyer and the seller. And you say, okay, well, the buyer knows that, right? They're buying it subject to. Why do you have to disclose it to the buyer? Well, a subject to transaction can actually be assigned. And so you want to make sure that if you're going to assign a subject to transaction, that the buyer purchasing it knows and has those disclosures, right? So if you assign the purchase contract, you're also assigning that addendum, which then gives those disclosures. So now the buyer knows, oh, okay, this is subject to, I, I, I'm I receiving a copy of the addendum as the assignee and I'm stepping into the shoes as though I, you know, signed and executed and agreed to, to that. The assignment also should have some language in there um, as far as the, uh, that it's a subject to transaction, but nevertheless, you're putting those disclosures in so that the, the new buyer, the end buyer, you know, doesn't come back and say, well, I was not aware of any of this, you know, type of thing. Um, the addendum also provides that the seller will execute certain agreements at closing. And we're going to talk, not agreements, but documents at closing. We're going to talk about what those documents are in a minute. But it says, hey, there are certain documents that you need to sign that gives us certain power and authority um, with respect to the property. And you're going to sign those on or before the close of escrow. And then the third thing that the addendum um, does is it has what we call a cooperations clause which basically says, hey, look, there's a universe of things that can happen with the subject to transaction. Um, and uh, what we do know though, is that you're gonna cooperate seller. You're gonna take steps necessary for the parties to uh, act according to their agreement, to enforce the agreement, to effectuate the agreement, and you're gonna 
cooperate even after the close of escrow. You know, if something happens and I need loan information, you're going to cooperate and you're going to work to provide that loan information to me as the, the new owner of the property. Uh, and then from there, uh, the, the documents that you're going to want to have executed on or before close of escrow is an authorization to release information for the, the existing loans, as well as any uh, insurer uh, of the property. Um, as the new buyer, you generally are going to put your own insurance in place, but uh, there could be a, a, a lapse in time where the existing seller's insurance remains, or you may choose to keep the seller's insurance um, in place, but you want to make sure that uh, you're able to obtain information from the uh, insurance company. Uh, you want an, an instruction letter to the existing lender what to do with monies that are being held in their impound or escrow account, meaning most lenders require as part of your loan payment to pay uh, an amount ahead of time for taxes and insurance. Well, what happens when that loan is paid off? Uh, you know, let's say you as the new buyer, you go and you refinance uh, that loan and you pay it off. Well, now there's money there. Well, that money that you've paid in for the last three years is going to go back to the seller unless you have some authorization or instruction telling that lender, hey, look, uh, apply the existing uh, impound or escrow balance to the payoff. So now I have a smaller payoff amount or, you know, issue a check to this, you know, uh, new buyer. Uh, on the property. Uh, then you have an assignment of insurance proceeds. So this is uh, important, especially if you're going to keep the seller's um, insurance in place. You want that seller to basically say, hey, look, um, any interest that I may have in any claim related to the property uh, and insurance claim related to the property, I assign to the new buyer. So you want to make sure that they assign everything related to insurance to the new buyer. Um, I mean, I've had circumstances or, or, and been involved in circumstances where something happened to the property, no assignment of insurance proceeds was executed, the insurance was still in the seller's name, and all of a sudden the, the, the seller who doesn't own the property anymore has a right to the insurance money after the property burns down. Well, that's a problem, right? So you want to make sure to have that assignment in place. Then you want a limited power of attorney, basically allowing you as the buyer to act as with respect to that property, whether it's uh, as to the, the loans, any future escrow, any insurer, um, you want to make sure that you have that you know limited power of attorney that you can use kind of as a last resort. Um, but should you need to make decisions with respect to the property and should... Uh, a financial institution or a title company say, well, we want to deal with the original, you know, seller or the, the bar borrower on the loan or the original uh, insured, you have this power of attorney that would allow you to step in and handle the transaction. And then finally, um, you know, for seller financing or subject to transactions, I recommend uh, for the protection of of all parties involved, and especially the seller, um, putting in you know some type of wrap loan in place, um, and so you would do a promissory note and deed of trust or mortgage, and the promissory note would have basically it'd be what we call a mirror loan, which it mirrors, unless you're you're actually providing uh, funds above the existing loans to the seller and, and the seller's carrying back those funds. Otherwise, it's just going to mirror the existing loans and provide that, you know, the monthly payments to be made um, on, on the new loan, you know, the wrap loan are the same as the payments to be made to the existing lenders. So those are the documents that you generally are going to need for a successful subject uh, to transaction.